say good morning, good morning. Hi, I'm Rabbi Brian says so right there. That's how I know. I'm glad that you're here. I'm here joined with all my friends who are on Facebook and uh, live on YouTube. And here are people who are live in Zoom. So those who are live in Zoom, if you would wave, say hi so everyone can. Hi. Hi there. There we go. It's good, good go saying hi. And I'm going to do my camera from above for a moment so you can see here's me in what looks like a messy office. But because image is everything, I broadcast from this camera and it looks really good. I'm glad you guys are all here. Um, I'm going to take a moment just to make sure I don't I don't do this on on hyperspeed and I'm actually present and joining you and live and I ask you all to just take a moment to to present yourself we lit candles last night we do that on Friday nights um, because that's what we do it's a tradition um, we lit candles Annie had some friends over and I was trying to explain to them first of the fact that my daughter wants to invite her friends over on a Friday night is like, that's the best thing ever. And then, okay, I'm just going to brag, but um, <coughs> but I, it's because I want to. I had a, a night last week. Emmett had a really hard time. Something happened in school, and he said, he's 15 years old, and he said, Dad, would you fall asleep in my bed tonight? Oh, so Aww. I just wanted to share that. Um, so Annie's friends were over, and I was talking about this idea when we light the candles of, and we did this um, when I was in, in New York two weeks ago, we started this way, of taking a little bit of extra space. And that's really what a Sabbath is about, um, is to say, you know what, I don't have to be on that frenetic pace. And I've noticed this in... If you don't know, I, I play French horn. I've been playing for two years, and I'm decided now that I'm at intermediate, and it's going pretty well. But what I realized I do, and tell me if this isn't something that you, you find that you do in your life as well. In French horn, when I have a piece to play, I unconsciously start playing it at as fast as I can be playing it, and so invariably I make mistakes. Like, I can't, I, I'm learning the piece, and it's like my default setting is to do it as fast as I can so that I'm doing it near the right speed, but I, I it causes me to flop a lot. And it takes real mental work to slow down. And I'm going to ask you guys as this is uh, our time together to slow down I mean you know the person in the in when you're driving and that one car is going and they're you're like where are you going so fast that you're gonna get home 14 seconds faster now what is that and we all do it it's I there's a great quote from Gandhi. We could be done with the service in a minute. I'm just going to give you this little piece of wisdom and then we get one more. And all I have to do is send out the two-point summary. <laughs> Gandhi said, Gandhi said this about life. He said, there is more to life than merely increasing its speed. Mm -hmm. Some of you knew that quote. There is more to life than merely increasing its speed. Show of hands, how many of us rush a little bit um, as our default setting is to, to rush? All right, who's still putting their hand up, but they're putting it up really slowly? <laughs> yeah, okay. Now, how about, how about deliberately putting your hand down slowly? No, you already put your hands down. Okay. <laughs> Never mind that. Never mind. So let's take a moment um, to just present ourselves to slow down a bit. And I'll talk a little bit more later about... Um, about that but let's just slow down i want to share with you guys two things one i had a great talk with my literary agent i feel like i want to share all that with you um and she loves she loved the first two chapters of what i wrote she didn't say as beautiful things about chapters three through nine but that's okay um the other thing i i need to tell you 
is I got a call last Sunday from the woman who runs Magic Camp. And some of you have heard me talk about Magic Camp. It's where I went when I was nine years old. It's a place to learn magic tricks. It was my first summer camp. And it was a place that, you know, people have that special, that like that's the place. Magic Camp is my place. And I've gone back every summer. COVID, of course, I was involved digitally. And this year, due to COVID, there's not enough kids oh. and usually there's 120 kids and I run the second dormitory um, but there's only 70 kids this year which means that yours truly is not going to magic camp I'm not going to magic camp and I am go so as a camper yeah. so um, I can't can we do our own magic camp and yes. you can lead us Yes, I, I'm actually uh, planning on doing a... I'm going to teach you all how to do two good tricks. I'm going to put oh, a little course together. Okay. All but, right. But um, I, I'm not... I, and I thank you guys for, for... Thank you for the solution, the idea. Right now, I'm just mourning. I'm not ready to fix. I'm really in mourning. I'm really, really, really sad. Because it's my favorite place in the whole world. And... It, um, I've told a few people this and just to save some time um, if you have an easy solution to how I can fix this problem it's probably not a right solution <laughs> right because I probably have already tried that since last Sunday and I appreciate the desire to get me out of my discomfort by solving it but that's not what I need hmm and this is this is from some old marital advice that I got when Janie and I were in marriage counseling. And I give it to wedding couples. And I say, one of the things you need to learn how to do when, you're, when your beloved has a problem is to say, what kind of help do you want from me right now? Because sometimes we want someone to solve the problem and sometimes we just want someone to hear us and to let us feel heard. So that's... Hey, look, that's our second little thing. So one, we got Gandhi, the thing about <laughs> lowering down our speed. And the second, and we're done. Now the rest and of it is And we're out. We're done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're done. And the second thing is Thanks um, for playing. To, to ask people when they, when they have a problem is to, to stifle down <laughs> our natural inclination to fix mm -hmm. and to just ask because you don't always know. How can I support you right now? How can I be of help? Do you mm -hmm. want me to listen? Do you want me to solve? Because I can do both. I can do either. Do you want me to put a hex on the person who's messing you up? <laughs> ah, ah, okay. Ah. No. Okay. Good. Um, so I, I thank you. I, I needed. I I just need to share that. I'm really really sad. I woke up anxious and sad about camp again this morning. And um, Brian. Could I, could I say one thing? Thank you, Hugh. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking about what, what, you've, what you've shared. And uh, to feel pain about something and to express pain about something is an emotional activity. It's an emotional sense. Yeah. To try to problem solve is a, is a cognitive thing. And so when, when I'm with someone uh, who is expressing emotion to me um, I think my proper response is to not to move to the cognitive but to sit with them yeah. in the emotional and that's a helpful way of framing the difference for me between the, w w where when the heart communicates and what the heart needs eventually someone will move to the cognitive yeah. but but it takes time to go from the heart to the yeah. head anyway so I, I thought I, I would totally... share that as a bit of helpful a helpful framework that that I found. Uh, thank you, Hugh. I uh, thank you. A ab abs absolutely, it is. There's a separation between the heart and the head, ain't there? And it sometimes goes the other way too, where I know, like that I'm forgiving someone and that I should be forgiving them, and I get it up here, but it takes a while till I can get it down to here. Wow. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a thing. Um, you, I have somehow spotlit you in my, there we go. And I have refixed that. Um, thank you, Hugh. 
I want to start today by looking again at this quote that we looked at last week. There's nothing good or evil save in the will. And we are all fine with that. And then the second part, we are not to lead events, but to follow them. And people didn't like that. And that's fine. Just because there's a quote by a, a dead famous person <laughs> doesn't mean that they're right. And it doesn't mean that you, that, that we have to like what they said. There's, I'm, I'm going to give you a quote from a different dead famous person to counter the other dead famous person. There's a quote by Walt Whitman, and I think this one is, this is religion outside the box. Walt Whitman said, dismiss all that insults your soul. Oh, wow. Could I hear someone say that back so I hear it again? Dismiss all that insults your soul. Insults your soul. Insults your soul. Dismiss all that insults your soul. Hmm. Well, now we're definitely done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyone have anything else to yeah. talk about? Nope. All right. Nope, that'll do it. See you right next here. week. Um, I have. <laughs> I heard a good definition this week about tradition. Go for it. Tradition is peer pressure from dead people. Yeah. Ooh. 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 Uh, that sounds like that's coming just in time for Passover. <laughs> <laughs> Passover comes up this year on the 15th of Nisan, as it does every year. This year it happens to co correspond to the 15th of April as well. But peer pressure from dead people, that's fantastic. Isn't that brilliant? Yeah. <laughs> They have a lot of power, don't they, those dead people? Yes. Wow. Yep. And um, they're immune to persuasion. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rags. Um, I, I, oh, hold on, give me a second. I have a question, as I often do. I have a question. I don't want the answer to, there, there, you, you'll hear one question and I don't want you to answer a different question. I don't want you to answer, here's the question I don't want you to answer. How should you deal with someone who disagrees with you? I don't want an answer to that question. I want the answer to the question of how do you deal when someone disagrees with you? Let me make that, uh, uh, let me say that out again. If I ask the question of, how do you deal with people who disagree with you? Some of us might answer, well, what I think we should do is, I don't care about the theory. Mm -hmm. I want to go with like, let's actually assess what do, what do you, you, what do you do when someone disagrees with you? Someone disagrees with you and... What do you do? It depends greatly on who the person is, their relationship, and the heat of the disagreement. Who the person is. Mm -hmm. Rags, did you get my notes ahead of time to prepare <laughs> such a great response? <laughs> it's a mind meld thing. Wow. Well, but, wow. So it depends on who the person is what the disagreement's about and the heat behind it. All right, who the person is, I think that can vary. Like sometimes <laughs> Emmett disagrees with me and I react one way and sometimes Emmett disagrees with me and I act, react a different way. And what you fear. And what I fear. What I fear. What I fear. I fear if I disagree with my son too much, he'll leave me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Well, that's that's part of the who the person is, meaning who the person is in my personal world. Okay. He's going to eventually leave you anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> do 
do you guys know that that that's just not true? I'm moving well, to college it, with him. It's on the care. terms. That's don't bet against it. <laughs> it's 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 on the terms in which the the other person leaves. Okay, yes. so let let me let me let me let me focus this back up. Let me focus yeah. this back up. When someone disagrees with me, I tend to blank. Agree with them. Uh, oh boy, yeah. you're a saint. No, he's not. <laughs> I, I, I have How to fight my anger. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I do the same thing Rob does, and it's a judo, jujitsu, aikido kind of move. If someone disagrees with me, I do my best to agree with their disagreement first first thing. Why? Because how are they going to fight with me if I'm agreeing with them? Oh. Yeah, it really is a jiu-jitsu. You deflect the force. You deflect mm -hmm. the force because the heat, I think we're going to get to that this heat part, if they disagree with me, Rabbi, you're... Well, actually, most of them disagree with me. Rabbi, I don't understand why you insist on using that potty language. And they're saying it without any heat behind it, but there is... Without technically having heat in it, but there's heat in it. Um, Bob, Bob has his hand up. Yeah, go ahead, Bob. Thank you, Maria. Oh, and Maria, thank you for running tech. And Joe, thank you for monitoring the chat and letting me know if there's something in there. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, if, if Emmett doesn't ever leave you, you won't have any grandchildren. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. I really don't want to see how that happens. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> thank you, Bob. Someone disagrees with us. So let's make a list. What are some of the wrong things we do when someone disagrees with us? When people disagree with us, maybe let's let's do it more in a general as opposed to anyone having to admit to doing this themselves. What people tend to do when people agree with them is get defensive. Yeah, we get defensive. Go ahead. Give me some, say another one. I missed shut a few. Down. We shut down. Someone disagrees with me. I shut down. I'm out of here. Right back. We fight back. Right. Ready to answer back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We prove yeah. we double down. Yeah. We do. We agree with them. Rob and Rob is going to give us our, our, our alternate position of agreeing with them. Or if, just shut down. Yeah, just shut yeah. down. Just shut down. I, like just check out. I just check out and leave them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Just Derek, thank yeah. you for your yeah, honesty there. Shutting down is a favorite of mine. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of us do that. Check out and leave them. You don't like I, what I said? I Fuck you. Them too. And then plan how to get even. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Appreciate the honesty, yeah. Shmuley. I sometimes ask them to explain their point of view. Yeah. That's a good one. Uh, there, was, there was another voice that I missed there. No, we're all good. No. Okay. Sometimes I say, consider the source. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they're all jerks. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, Otherwise, they'd agree with you. Right. <laughs> there's this. There's this idea. And that's a hard one. That behind, we've touched on this one before, and we're gonna we're gonna try it again. That behind every complaint <laughs> is a commitment. I'm going to say mm. that again. That behind every complaint is a commitment. Rabbi, I do wish you wouldn't use such dirty language. It belittles your message. Behind every complaint, there's a commitment. What is that person saying? If I could hear their commitment to me. Mm. Rabbi, I do wish you didn't use such potty mouth. Fuck you. Right? No, 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 I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you didn't use such potty mouth. Can you tell me what is the commitment behind that? I care about your teaching and want others to hear it, and it gets in the way. Right? Mm -hmm. Let me give another one from my life. Um, no, I don't really want to give another one from my life. <laughs> 
Well, because I was just going to—I was going to throw a, a family member under the bus, and that didn't seem no. Like a, right. No, don't do that. No, no, no. Right. Bad idea. Because then, anyone have an example of someone? Here, let's challenge. Mm. Who's got an example of someone who said something to you recently, and you're like, "That was not a commitment. That was a complaint." Someone have an example of a complaint that hit hit them recently? Mm. <clears throat> Yeah, go no, ahead, Candace. Candace. You're on mute, but go ahead. Uh, Candace, you're still on mute. Yeah. There you are. Yeah. You're on. Yeah. I'm not using my mouse. I'm using the touchpad, so um, I got a little confused. Um, this didn't happen in the past week, but it, see, it's someone I've been friends with for uh, several decades, anyway. And... Um, because of her health status to some extent yeah. and her financial status uh, I mean when we first met we were going to a school uh, together and um, anyway fast forward through the decades um, and she uh, she actually moved into a slightly nicer part of the city near me which was great and she started having these meltdowns something would her and she'd have these and she went away there's a uh, a retreat not too far from us called well it is far but it's king's fold she went out there for a few days um it didn't help her meltdowns and it doesn't matter what started it but <clears throat> she uh, here's someone who's going back into counseling for her meltdowns and she has said twice, I hope you get the help you need. And I actually have no freaking idea what she's talking about. Uh -huh. And there are people in my current town who, they haven't known me as long, but they've known me, they know me much better. And, um, but when that just came out of the blue, as, as we were sort of making amends by text, and so... It felt, I mean, here's a woman who's getting counseling for meltdowns, and she's hoping I get the help I need. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a little bit and, of projection maybe going on there. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, but it, it uh, the second time she said it, I, I found it, it felt, it felt like a slap in the gut, and um, mm -hmm. I was communicating with, with a friend of mine, and over what this, um, person had said and I'm basically uh, I said I don't think we're going to be able to be friends anymore I, I, th I think that's the point of the well it's just you know she's in the city and I'm here and we haven't spent a lot of time together and there's people here that we know each other better than you know I now her, know her or she knows me so um So in this case, Point. I disagreed with her. I just kept my trap shut because yeah, it's a, probably a better better thing out. to do. I was wondering why I would have asked her the question. What what do you think I need? Uh, it wasn't the time to ask her because she was going through her own stuff. Yeah, and my one cat that had died um, was one that one of two that she had owned down in Ontario and they had flown out to me before she arrived. And because of COVID, like, there were no trains running, but I found a bus line that would get her as far as Winnipeg. And I flew to Winnipeg, rented a car, and we drove back to Calgary. Um, it's, it's rough hard to be friends with people sometimes, yeah? Yeah. Very hard. <laughs> yeah. How many there's of us of, would... There's a couple of comments in the chat that sort of say similar things. Go, um, ahead, go ahead. Thank you. Thank so you, Candace. Keep going, Joe. It's... it. They're referencing... It's referencing like that... It depends on... Like, like you can't... You can decide how you want to handle a disagreement, 
But basically, the comments are saying it also depends oh, on who the yeah, other yeah, person yeah. is and what the situation is. You know, like, um, but here, which, like, how willing am I to hear the other person? How willing is the other person to hear me? Yeah. So yeah. Th there's a, there's a, I guess, well, I the comments seem back, to be saying uh, both Joe, people have to be willing to you play. You can't get into a fight with someone who's not willing to fight back. Yeah. And there's that great yeah. scene yeah. in To Kill a Mockingbird right. where Atticus, um, someone spits in their face. Someone spits in yeah. Atticus's face. And Atticus yeah. says, well, come on, let's, let's go. And that takes a lot of fortitude. Somebody, There's a great book by Sherry Huber called Don't Bite the Hook. And it's all about this idea of the heat. And th this, I'm going to bring up this quote and we're going to come back to it later. This, this great quote from Viktor Frankl. Come on, quote. <laughs> Here it is. There it is. I like that. Don't bite the hook. <laughs> Everything can be taken from a man. And if Viktor Frankl were writing it today, I think... Uh, obviously would be person. So everything can be taken from a person, but one thing, the last of human freedoms, the cho to choose one's own attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. Yeah. Everything can be taken, but one thing, the last of human freedoms, to choose one's own attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. Amen. I got a letter from our friend James. Uh, James, if you don't know, is in prison and he's getting the short end of all the sticks. And he wrote... Here, let me bring that on the screen. Come on. I think I have lost my technology today. There it is. He said, after complaining about it, he said, I'm going to go with love. Like, what else is there to do? Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. tired of making do, though. I want out. Ha ha. Oh, well. Make do. Mm. <laughs> the only thing we have, the, the biggest thing that we have, is that we can choose, at least to some extent, and we have to practice doing it, we can choose our own attitude. Mm. Right. Even if we can't change anything in the circumstance. Even if we can't change anything. Yeah, Chad and Lisa. Uh, I've mm -hmm. got a good one uh, that follows along with this. You do not have to attend every fight you're invited to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. It's really hard. And we've all practiced this with the tissue. When someone blows a nose in the tissue. <laughs> Do you want this? No, thank you. It's easy to say with a snotty tissue. But when your mom says something snotty to you or your coworker tries to bully you, it's really hard to not accept that fight. <coughs> I'm going to... Um, uh, Bob has his hand up. Okay, go ahead, Bob. <laughs> yeah, I think another uh, way of handling a situation... Where a person passes judgment, and obvious that they want to engage you in a conversation, and I think maybe another option is to, to say, "I thank you for your opinion." Yeah, it's really hard to do, and that's going to take us some practice. And, and well, I would say, what else are you doing with your time? I mean, let's practice this. <laughs> little snark there. Yeah, a little, a little bit. Emily, go ahead, my friend. Or, or along with Bob's, uh, do you want to talk about this? Yeah. And if you I can mean, say that asking. in a calm way, they come at you. Rah, 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 and you say, you, you want, want to talk, talk about, about something? Something pissing you off? <laughs> if you would like, James's uh, third book just done. It's called Freedom oh, yeah. by Degrees. You can buy it at Amazon. You can buy it at Barnes & Noble. Freedom by, Freedom by degrees, and in, in James Wilson, um, and his story is around page fifty-four or so. But it's all it's all different guys writing, and it's it's profound. You can read about how James decided to give up gang life 
um, and how he met Nagi, this Buddhist teacher, who's the one who introduced me to him. And actually, the foreword is written by our very own Alex, who's not able to be here today. Um, it says that right there's, a, there's there. Another, there's another point in the chat that says, Sometimes I don't realize I'm letting people roll over me until later, which yeah, point right. is sometimes you can only do your best in the moment. And then later you go, oh, I wish I had done that yeah, better. Yeah, it, it's, it, that is so true. That, that does give us a little more, you know, that little pause that I was yeah. talking about at the beginning. Mm hmm. It, the more we can have a little bit of pause that we don't just react. There's the, oh, I, eventually I want us to get to a certain place, but I got to do prayer time and then I got to bring us to a different discussion. And hopefully I'm going to sneak something in before a time. But uh, Joe, do you have names of people for whom we would like to add some prayers and good thoughts and take a I minute? sure do. Rita, Jeff Brooks. Alex, Diane, Margaret, and I just want to mention she's in her last days, three to five, according to the hospice. Um, Scott G, Frida, Greg, Judy, Shelly, Zoe, Lauren N, Lauren L, Joe, Carol, the youth group uh, at Christina Post's church, Maria Francis, the Ukraine and Russian people and leaders. And I think that's it. Okay, so let's take a minute of time starting right. Uh, there's a clock above me. Let's start right when we get to 832. We'll just take a minute of silence. Oh. I, I would like to remind everyone that tomorrow morning, if you aren't otherwise uh, aware, I'm going to be making matzah with uh, anyone who wants to online. It's this beautiful recipe from 1503. You can find out at L... If, uh, would somebody who's in the chat just type in lu.ma slash 1503 matzah. So it's to make this matzah from a recipe from 1503, it's really a fun time. We have about 50 people signed up. And uh, if you can make it, I, I implore you to join. I want to teach us a very quick um, thing and then go into the second part of a discussion. O, F, N, are. I'm going to do this very quickly. We're going to titrate this over the next few weeks because this is a this is a deep concept. This comes from Marshall Rosenberg in his book Nonviolent Communication. The first two parts you know already. Observe and feel. Wow, good spelling there, Rabbi. It's an S somewhere. Observe. That feel, wow, letters are not my friend today. <laughs> that we observe something and how we feel about them are separate. We did this before and we called it discernment and judgment. That we remember with my two little stick figure people that there was a space between what you observe and what you judge. 
And in Martian Rosenberg's book, here it is, he calls it um, ob observe and feel. I had called it discern and judgment. It's the same thing. It's how, how do you, you notice something and then you have a feeling about it. Sometimes you have the feeling about it before you consciously observe it. But Rosenberg's idea is that in conflict, we can de-escalate conflict. If instead of saying, why the hell are you always late to this meeting? Right? Instead of saying, why the hell are you always late to this meeting? We say, I've noticed that the last three times that we've had meetings, you haven't been here at the prescribed time. It's a big difference between the way those are said. If you can say it in, instead of having judgment to it, you just say, I've noticed that. It's an observation much less heat behind it. I've noticed that you're late to the meeting the last four times we've had meetings. That makes me feel abandoned. Not you've abandoned me by not showing up, but I've noticed this. I feel there's no arguing with it. These are just two facts. I've noticed that you're late. I feel abandoned. The other person can't say, no, you don't feel... Well, they can say that, but that'd be goofy. <laughs> they can't say, no, you don't feel abandoned. I, obs I have been observing this. It makes me feel this. That's the O and the F. The N is for needs. I have a need. And the last part is the response. Request. Gosh darn it. My brain today. You have a need and a request, and we'll, we'll talk about that more. I just want to front load that this is a pedagogical technique. The word pedagogical just means that I went to graduate school in education and used the word pedagogical. <laughs> pedagogical just means a learning technique. A learning technique is to put something out there first. Now, your brains do something with it, and then from there, we're going we're gonna to pick it up more later. But for right now... You know what the you've gotten the four letters. The four letters are O F N R. O F N R. And the first two letters stand for observe. Observe and feel. And let's stop there. We're gonna stop that part right now. Thank you guys for for the front load. I'm glad I finally got the front loading in on that. I want to talk about here. Wait, this is pretty something. Uh, next week I'm celebrating with you two years of doing these services. Isn't that amazing? Two years of doing these services. Wow. And they, they've changed a lot. This is the first service. Will there be cake? There's always. You <laughs> have to bring your own cake. This was, this was what it looked like. I was not yet able to have other people on the screen. I was in desperate need of a haircut. Um, and it was much more, um, I did a, like, look at the color of it. Rabbi Brian Saturday morning super quiz. It was a little bit more, uh, extra than it is right now. I have changed a lot in the last two years, as I'm sure you guys have as well. I set out to run this service starting two years ago because there was a need. There was a need two years ago, and I wanted to help with that need. I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew that I had some skills, I had some tools, and I had some idea of which direction I wanted to go in. I want us to look for a little moment of what we've done. And I can tell you for me, I, am, I watched the two years ago video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can also listen to myself play the French horn two years ago. I play the French horn much better now. This mm -hmm. service is much calmer than it was. It was really a bit frenetic. I, I, Jane used to say, it sounds like you're shouting. Mm -hmm. And I said, I told her about what I was planning on talking with you guys today, what we we're going to talk about. And she said, I don't even hear you run the services anymore. So we're going to get her to get her hearing checked. No, that's a bad joke. <laughs> but I have calmed down. I'm much less panicked. There were 
at the beginning of this service and Al and some other people helped me to figure out, well, what are the metrics? What's the, how do I know that this service is, is, is successful? And Afia has been helpful on that and Kip and others have been helpful in helping me figure out how do I, and the most obvious things to measure were how many people showed up. And I said, that is not a measurement of the success of a service. It's not. Doesn't matter how many people show up. That's not, that to me doesn't mean the service was successful. Well, it to me meant the service was a successful service. I had two things. One was how calm I was on um, Thursday, Friday, thinking <clears throat> about the service coming into Saturday. And I needed to be calmer. I said, a measure of the success of the service is going to be on how frantic I am planning it. And the second one was how moved I felt. Oh, there's a puppy. Hi, puppy. <clears throat> I don't know if you're on the, if you're in the clubhouse on the Religion Outside the Box clubhouse, we had a featured article about Sparky. Sparky. <laughs> he was um, featured. And apparently he is a wonderful meditator. He's just not teaching his techniques. <laughs> Okay, I thought that was much funnier than you did. <laughs> <laughs> the second measure of the service success was that I felt good afterwards. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't understand my notes. <laughs> I have a note here of what we have done, and this made so much sense last night when I wrote it down. I guess I can, oh, so what's changed? That's what I, that's the topic was. What's changed is that I feel calmer. I feel more connected now than I did before. I want to ask you, if you've been coming to this service, what's changed in your life? In, and, and there's this thing called the post hoc fallacy. The post hoc fallacy, it's Latin and it means after this. So there's the sun starts to rise before it rises, the rooster crows. The crowing rooster is not what causes the sun to continue to rise. That is a post hoc <laughs> fallacy. Um, people lose their creativity somewhere around 12, 13. They stop doing spontaneous drawings. Um, and people say, well, that's the fault of school. No, it's not. That's a post hoc fallacy. It is not because of school that we stopped making drawings. It's much more nuanced and interesting than that. Post hoc fallacy might be um, that I've been coming to this service and that's why I'm now changed. It, we might be dabbling a little bit in some post hoc fallacy. I'm all right with that. My question to you is, take a minute, moment. What's changed for you in two years? What's changed for you in these two years since we started doing this? I'll take just one person with one answer. That would just be great at this moment. Carol, who hasn't shared for a while. Hi, Carol. You talking about me? I was talking about you. I thought you wanted to say something. If you don't, I don't want to put you on the spot. No, I haven't changed much. <laughs> I happen to know that that's not true, but I'll let you believe it. <laughs> I haven't been here the whole time. No, so. but in the times that you, from when you started, you feisty, rascally one, uh, you you changed some, but that's all right. Um, Al, Al and, and Derek have an idea. Go ahead, Derek. Well, Al's first. Go ahead, Derek. You go first. Okay. Go, puppy. We can't go. hear you. You're free. Sorry, Derek, puppy. you're muted. Let's try that again. Fact, Al, go the ahead. Fact, the fact that I keep coming back all the time is mm -hmm. a big change for me. Mm. Big change. Okay. I'm, I normally you. wouldn't follow up as closely as I do on this type of a thing. Thank mm -hmm. you, Derek. Mm -hmm. yeah, Al, too. were you saying something? 
Yeah, I've gotten more more curious, and the space between stimulus and response has gotten longer for me, which this, is a good thing. The space between stimulus and response. I think you're referring back to that Viktor Frankl quote, but for yep. the, those of us who uh, explain those words, stimulus and response. Well, when something happens to me, I'm more able to take a pause, and I'm able to take longer pauses before I actually react and do something about it. Right. And, you know, you may say, well, that means you're getting slow, Al. <laughs> that's not the way I look at it. I look at it as I'm taking a time to think about what I want to do and not yeah. just react and so instinctively and so uh, in the moment. Yeah. There's this um, pre-action it's almost like so many things happen and and we react to it without even considering our response. Mm -hmm. We just, we react habitually. Emily, you have your hand up. What's changed, my friend? I don't feel compelled to say fuck so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know some of us have missed that. <laughs> Emily, I think I—I I mean, I'm, folks. It's I have an unfair outside advantage, but Emily, I've seen you be able to express yourself uh, more openly in the mm. last two years, yeah, and to not true. second guess yourself, and to just put mm -hmm. yourself out there. I've mm -hmm. seen that happen. You were—you were a little more timid two years ago. Mm-hmm. Mm. Carol Ann Clausen Williams, I've seen you be loving in ways. I'm sorry for calling you out. <laughs> Not really that sorry. <laughs> I've seen you be loving in situations where you never thought you could be loving. Mm. Well, I didn't see that, so I'm glad somebody saw it. <laughs> you are one of my favorites, but that's all right. Meg, you've talked Regardless about things that have changed. Can, do you mind oh, adding? Yeah. Um, one of the things is I look forward to this service. Mm. Um, and I have learned some of the things other people talk about. There's more space between, um, what happens and how I react to it. Yeah. I'm kinder and I work on that. I've got some friends. There's one in uh, Colorado, um, another in Oregon and um, I, I would not have had these these yeah, people yeah. available to me um, this this service is the high point of my week mm -hmm. now that may seem like I have a bad week but <laughs> 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 I don't think so I really um, it, this is very important to me yeah I, so what it me looks too. to me that we have mm -hmm. built is we built a community mm -hmm. and we built a community <coughs> that is quite it's got some unique characteristic which is it is a religious and i use the word with the open use of the open definition but it's a religious group we talk about religious concept but we're not all the same at all Mm -hmm. And we are, because mm -hmm. we're all willing to, to be here. And mm -hmm. I want to, I want to ask you guys, and this, this is, um, I want to ask you two years in, I'm committed to doing this more, but I want to ask you about how and we'll talk about this more next week too. So don't feel like we have to get this. I wanted to front load this as well. What are, are you? Nobody has to show up. I don't even show up all the time. So I'm going to ask you to make some kind of. I was talking uh, yesterday, Kip, I might have to ask you to help me out here because I'm feeling a little bit um, confused. <laughs> I want to ask people to commit more to to commit to being in this group and not to just I'm trying to get all the words out right 
<laughs> that we all know these religious principles of taking time be before we react. We know the religious principle of loving, of, of looking for a com commitment in the complaint, of not taking the other person's hatred seriously. Of we all, we all understand the idea of, well, if we're annoyed by someone, maybe, maybe, maybe we need to afford them a little bit more space and love. And I guess I want to ask you to commit to doing that in this group. And for us as a group, as a whole, to work together and, and to, to not not show up next week because somebody said something that was annoying mm. or to not not show up because someone said something and you're offended by them. But instead to show up next week and say, hey, I noticed when someone said this thing that I, I, I it, it, it felt weird to me. And I guess what I'm asking is, I'm asking for us, I made this note to try to read this, is that for us as individuals to use this group to practice our spiritual religious wisdom tools within mm -hmm. the context of this group. Wow. You can read a lot of books about spirituality. I do. <laughs> but that's a different thing than living it for the time that we're all together here. And so how do I how do I deal with the person who in my head is taking up too much airtime during this service? And how do I deal with my total frustration that somebody's completely off topic? And how do we do that without just glad handing and being like, oh, it's all good. <laughs> but how do we act? How do we do anger with each other? How do we disagree with each other in, in as clean of a way? And when we don't do it clean, to be committed to cleaning it up. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, Kip! What parts did I miss from yesterday, Kip? And, and hey, Kip, uh, God bless you for helping me. That was some sticky conversations you and I have had. <laughs> I, I think you've got most of it, but I think what I heard before that I'd like—I think you'd like to emphasize—is it really you're asking people to be their authentic self here, mm. to really represent themselves authentically, knowing that this is a self, safe place that they can practice all these things we have in our various religious traditions about being kind, loving, and that you want this, the commitment is not showing up the, the sessions. It's the commitment to be authentic and to apply these tools as everyone else is also trying to be an authentic self. Yeah. Thank you. I can would... I just make a quick comment about what he just said? Yeah, totes. I love that he included to trust this group. I think that is foundational to growing in any any world, like in a in a pair, in a diet, in, a, in quadruples. If if we can allow ourselves to trust that this is a place of love, then growth can happen. That's just thank you, Kip. That's enormous what he just said and and to ask people to to be brave mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean to take someone on in a in a david and goliath stand up but in a hey i'm curious about i'd love to hear uh, one or two people kindly to so i know that mm -hmm. what did you just hear not necessarily asking you to commit uh, aloud to it, but what did you ask? What did you hear the ask to be? Be yourself. Yeah. Always. And, to and be that yourself. includes and that includes vulnerability. Making That's what I was vulnerable. Yeah. Be vulnerable. Be vulnerable. And we've seen uh -huh. we've had great examples of that. And I think God bless some of you have been 
so vulnerable and open. And I'm not asking everyone to be, you know, we're not we're not crying all the time. But but to be vulnerable, to be open, to be ourselves, yeah, that. Bob has had his hand up for a while. Go ahead, Bob. Thank you. Yeah. I, I guess I don't look at this as a service. And that because, and I don't look at it as my having a requirement to be here. And I look at this as a community of, of people that I enjoy interacting with and sharing and learning. And so, and I look at you, Brian, as a leader that uh, helps to organize uh, things and to help facilitate. Wow. And so that uh, I, I don't necessarily consider this to be a religious group because religions have some definitions. And so I look at this as being a group that is uh, gathering on these Saturdays and at other times, as uh, in 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 an element of of support and growth and sharing. Amen. And so, uh, so and, I, I and, guess that um, that's my two cents worth, you yeah. know. And 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 I I value that I have the opportunity to to participate with this group. Yeah. Okay, I, I have a comment. Go back to one, one of the things that uh, Bob said was uh, uh, about the, the leadership, about uh, uh, that it doesn't seem to be led or something. That is the, uh, the test of good moderator or leadership is that you don't really notice that it's happening. Mm -hmm. it, <laughs> Right, I, I'm, I'm. It's still my Zoom room. I'm still calling on people. So yes, I'm, I'm <laughs> doing, doing my best to be a, a kind and compassionate leader. Um, but I, I, Bob, I'm gonna disagree with you. Uh, but maybe we have different definitions of religion. Um, for me, this is religion. We just call it religion outside the box. We're not doing it with dogma, not with creed, not with having to make mm -hmm. any uh, declarations. But the things that we talk about are religious concepts because they're about bettering ourselves and bettering our lives and bettering the world. And for me, that, that's the <clears throat> core. That's, the, that's what religion is about. That's what religion should be. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> can I, can I say religion. one thing? Can yeah, I say I one should. thing about the word religion? Yes. Um, like it's got the word in it that, that is the word for ligament, which attaches bones together. So to re to re ligament, it's like it's a reattachment. We're taking time to reconnect with the things that make us who we are. And when I think of the word religion, I think of that. It's the practice of reattaching, reattaching. Mm. And reattaching mm. ourselves. Yeah, I love that. Mm. Folks, um, next week, I'm, like I'm going to ask you to do for homework. And to ponder this question, what is it that you can commit to? And I, I'm not asking you to, to you, you can you understand that question in any way that works for you and, and go wide. Committing to showing up, that's, that can be one thing. But committing to, I don't, you, you figure out how you want to use the word commitment. And I'd like next week for us to talk about what our commitments are to each other and to this group. It's a homework assignment. All right, cool. Um, thank you guys all for being here. Our dear friend Alex is not here, so I'm going to try to pass the hosting over to Maria. Hold on, let me get this right. Change host to Maria. And then I'm going to stop the recording Oh, but first, everybody do a little wave. Say goodbye to all the people who are watching. Bye, people. <laughs> <laughs>